We're here with Byron Daly, a engineer for the number three team in the Cup Series at RCR. Byron, first of all, man, big congrats on the win a couple of weeks ago at Texas. I'm sure everyone has to be feeling good after that. Yeah, that was a really big uh, thing for our team. That was massive to get into the playoffs and be, you know, in contention this season. You know, the playoffs are like everything. So if you can get in early, it really lets you focus on the races in the playoffs and actually start making progress on those. One of my goals this year was to get to be able to talk to engineers and crew chiefs because it has always fascinated me what you guys do, and I've always wanted to pick your brain. So here we go. Um, first of all, just for people watching, what exactly does your job entail? So uh, my job is a lot of uh, like you know stuff you expect, like writing reports, doing some analysis on things we have going on in the weekend. There's a lot of information that you know flies around at, at a race team and. Uh, as an engineer, you, you kind of end up processing it all and kind of giving it to the crew chief and a nice package product. Um, and it, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of like math and things like that, you know, it's just trying to make it simple and easy for everyone to understand. Man, I, I'm no good with math, so I'll leave the engineering to you. <laughs> um, but okay, so we kind of talked during the week here, processing data. What do you do during a race? Are you at the track? So uh, normally, yes, with everything going on in the world, uh, not right now, but normally yeah. I'm at the track, kind of kind of the same thing, recording what the driver says for, for um, feedback and all that stuff, kind of maintaining the, da the database we have. Some of the stuff is like involved on the car, like placing information for the driver for him to see and read and stuff during the race. Everyone knows we have it. A dash now digital dash I, it's my job to program it make sure everything works so at the racetrack i maintain all of that stuff and kind of handle sometimes just do a little grill tape things like that try to keep the keep the keep those uh items under control because most of the time the crew chief is so busy like they only they only can handle so many things at one time so it's like as an engineer it's like you're you're at the racetrack your role is to support the crew chief Oh, absolutely. It, NASCAR is 100% a massive team sport. But you mentioned normally you're at the track, but I saw on the NBC broadcast that you guys at RCR have a giant war room that you sit in during the race. So what exactly is that war room and what kind of technology do you have access to in there? Yeah, as you guys probably saw during the race, it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit of everything, like, you know, timing, scoring, I'm um, sure you, you heard, uh, everyone heard Marty talk about, you know, some of the software we use to try to help us call the race and things like that. But um, yeah, it's just like being at the track, but you, you get the advantage of being able to see everything on a single wall. So, you know, usually at the track, you got to turn around behind you or something, you go see what the cars are doing down the back stretch if you can, things like that. But it's like, we can sit in a controlled environment, um, get you know, all the info we need about the race and just kind of relay what we're seeing to the track. I've heard so many mixed opinions about no practice. Obviously, that's the big piece of news that came out recently. I'm trying to gather as many perspectives as I can. So your perspective on no practice for the rest of the year, where do you stand on that? Honestly, I, I'm not against it. I feel like as on our side of things, like as an engineer, it's just a bigger challenge. You just need to make sure you show up to the racetrack ready to go, ready to go race. And I think as the fans have seen during this year, the teams are very capable of bringing packages to the racetrack that are race ready. Like uh, it's been even for me surprising to see how many, how many teams have like really nailed their setups just, you know, with no practice, no anything really you just kind of have to go with what you know so it's I, I think uh, I think it's just an extra added challenge and and you know unprecedented times and it's it's really made preparation at the shop really important and I think we've seen where uh, guys have really benefited from being prepared showing up like even ourselves like we were able to execute well at Texas and it's uh, it, it's been cool yeah, I mean, basically the entirety of this season, basically after March, has been who can unload the best. 
So with that added challenge of not being able to use practice to trim your car out, what can you do at the shop to make sure that your car is kind of race ready when you don't have practice? It's, it's, it's again about just going back and looking at, all right, what, what have we done before at a certain racetrack? And you then you kind of look at, all right, is there anything we've learned in the last few races that maybe we want to apply to that? And you set the car up as if you were going to go practice per se, but you're, you're just more certain that this is the package that you have to run. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you show up at like normal, like you go to practice, but this is what you're going to end up racing. And then you use the race from there to dial it in. And uh, yeah, being close is just all about using your notes, having good notes from uh, years previous. And honestly, after that, it's a little bit of a taste of luck. But other than that, you're good to go. <laughs> I'm sure it's got to feel great when when your guess is correct. Um, yes. If I could, if I could hit you, all right. So I've always wanted, as I mentioned, to, to pick a brain of the engineer. And I recently read a physics and NASCAR book that kind of explains some things that I've never really heard of before. Maybe you can help kind of explain things for, for other people who might be interested in this as well. But I guess my first thing is, especially now, this is probably super relevant, is with this schedule, we are jumping to all these different types of tracks, short tracks, intermediate, super speedways. When you're preparing a car in the shop, how different is a short track car to an intermediate to a super speedway? Uh, honestly, they, they're very, they're, they're different enough, like from our perspective that we have to keep track of all that stuff, uh, on the, you know, just looking at them, unless you're in the sport really, you know, involved in everything, sometimes they can look the same, but it's different from the days of old where you'd see like the fenders all skewed out and all that stuff from like the 07, you know, 06 days. But um, it, it, there's still enough differences between the cars that uh, we have to make sure that we, um, you know, apply those changes and, you know, you put them in our tools and try to, you know, balance around them. With those changes, you have a lot of different things that you can do to a race car to kind of make it work, whether that's different options for springs or shocks. How many different variables are you working with in the shop with preparing a car like in terms of number of different types of things you can do to the race car to make it fast i'm going to be honest with you that is such a large number that i <laughs> don't know off the top of my head but there yeah. are so many different things you can do and that's again going back to your previous question about between the different tracks it's like there's so many different setup ideas you can put to it and a lot of things that you know on paper you know, again, you know, using tools and all that stuff come out maybe to be the same, but like maybe your driver likes this more than the, than the other driver does. So it's like you end up in these situations where you're trying to accomplish the same thing, but you have many different ways of going about it. And that's the, that's the, the fun part about it for us is trying to figure out what's the right way to do it. And I'm sure once you find that right way, your lips are sealed. You're not telling anyone. That's team yes. secrets right there. Yeah, not right. <laughs> uh, so I've heard so many things about team secrets and and teams basically wanting to keep the information to themselves as they can because it's competitive advantage. One one just thing that's always been the rule in the garage is don't take pictures of the wheel wells. Why is that? Well, there's just a lot of like intellectual property in those areas. Like the the teams work really hard to try to beat each other right mm -hmm. and it's just one of those things that like it's you don't walk into somebody else's office right and start reading through their reports and stuff say you work for a different company or whatever it's it's kind of the same thing it's like a lot of a lot of the cars are similar right and just the way that the rules are but there's stuff that we, we do that kind of helps us out or you know other stuff that other people do to help them out and it's just it's just one of those things that you just don't do. Like, it's just be like, it, it's just exactly like walking into the class and stealing someone's homework. Just to go ahead and take pictures of somebody's car like that. So um, it's just, I guess, the competitive nature between the teams. And at the same time, that competitive nature does have a few boundary rules that are, you know, maybe not on paper as a rule, but like, it's just one of those things, a sign of respect between everybody in the garage. Absolutely. 
you mentioned the, the rules and, and how strict they can be, but obviously there has to be some sort of difference between uh, a great team and then a back of the pack kind of team. So where does NASCAR give you guys the wiggle room to make a little bit more of your customized car? Obviously without exposing team secrets, because I'm not trying to do that, but, but just generally, where can you guys kind of have your freedom to, to make the car fast? Uh, really, again, it goes back to like, you know, you look at your setup, what you're trying to do with the car, like the car wants to be where it wants to be, right? It's so it's, it's just about learning where, well, where to put it. And unfortunately, some of the smaller teams, they don't really have the budget to kind of know that information. Again, it's like, you have so many different combinations of things you can do to try to achieve, you know, that optimal position or whatever. Your car can be fast or slow on the long run or short run, just based on little things you do that um, are allowed, you know, by NASCAR. Like you can change tire pressure, you can change spring rates and things like that. Um, and everything has got a range that you're allowed to work in. So uh, most of our jobs is to actually work in those ranges and just find out what's the optimal, uh, I guess, what's well, the optimal solution to the equation, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It's very, it's very difficult, honestly, but it's something that smaller, lesser budgeted teams just can't keep up with. It's just, they, they can bring the same car, but if you just don't know what to do with it, it's, it's going to be hard to keep up. So I, I think that's where you see the differences. It is a lot of work, and you guys, obviously, the work has paid off with the victory. To kind of close it off, before we get to the playoffs, which you guys are locked into, are you changing out anything, experimenting with some different things before we get to September and are racing for a championship? Well, I think, again, like it goes back to what uh, we talked about earlier about being in the playoffs. It lets you now focus on – especially tracks that we're going to still visit that we'll see in the playoffs or tracks of similar types that we'll see in the playoffs. Like, you know, now we're running Daytona road course, uh, Charlotte Roval. I know they're a little bit different, but still kind of the same concept. So it's like, it, it, it allows you to uh, work on tracks that you're going to see again, or tracks that are similar to what you're going to see again, and maybe not worry about your, you know, your, uh, I guess your one-offs, I call them. And you don't have to go into any, any of these weekends thinking, oh, we got to win this weekend. Like, we got to put all our effort into this weekend. Now we, now we can look, pick and choose what we're looking at going forward and what's going to help us in the playoffs. Real quick, you did mention the Daytona road course. Is that going to be a headache to prepare for with basically, like, no information to work with? Uh, well, Yes and no. I mean, they've, there's been sports car races at Daytona Road Course yeah. before. So, so it's like we've got plenty of like video and content out there that we can watch to kind of learn about the racetrack. And hmm. it's uh, while those cars are different, it's, you know, I, you, you can read comments between, you know, different drivers that have gotten to run sports cars and, you know, race NASCAR road courses. And it's like, while the cars are different, there's still stuff that seems to transfer over. So uh, it, it, I don't think it'll be as uh, much as an unknown as it seems like everyone thinks it's going to be. But at the same time, you, you're going to put 40 stock cars on the Daytona Road Course. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be some excitement. Like, you know, a NASCAR road race is like unlike any other road race. There's always stuff going on. So. I think from a, a team side, a preparation side, I think we, we've got some knowledge to work with just what's out there, public domain and all that stuff, just from sports car races and all that stuff. But um, I think once the fan gets to see the, the actual on track, it's going to be like anything else. It's going to be chaos and strategy and all that stuff. So looking forward to Looking forward to it, too. And uh, I, I would have never guessed you could look at the IMSA cars and possibly get something from it. But uh, that's really interesting that, that you guys can use that. Byron, thank you so much for taking the time. It was uh, great talking to you and learning a little bit more about your job. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate the time and uh, enjoy the races.